We designed appropriate empiric therapy for HAP and VAP and we de-escalated from empiric therapy to pathogen-directed therapy. We evaluated patients' clinical stability to determine IV to PO antibiotic switch and recommended appropriate duration of therapy. We also developed a patient-specific plan for prevention of pneumonia. Now, let's develop a patient-specific plan for prevention of influenza. Let's take a look at what's in the influenza vaccine. In this table, I am showing you uh, the four different strains that have been in the influenza vaccine in the last four seasons, starting from 2020-21. And uh, you will see that there are four strains, so strain one, two, three, and four. Two of them are essentially influenza A, and the other two are influenza B, so one for Victoria lineage and one for Yamagata lineage. And this is why the vaccines are called quadrivalent vaccines because there are four different strains in it. And the 2020-21 season was the last time that we had a trivalent vaccine on the market. So trivalent will have strain one, two, and three, whereas quadrivalent will add a fourth strain. Since 2021, Every influenza vaccine on the market is quadrivalent. So we no longer have trivalent on the market. All of them have all these four strains. And what happens from season to season is that some of these strains may get updated. So for example, for the 2023-24, the strain one is getting updated. So now uh, for the egg-based, it is influenza A, Victoria, uh, sequence 4897 uh, from 2022, that's uh, H1N1, that's different than what was uh, last year, and the rest of them are similar or uh, I should say identical to what was in the vaccine from previous year. So, um, you know, the Yamagata actually has not changed in many years, uh, you know, simply because there is no variation in um, Yamagata in the influenza that's been observed. Uh, for Victoria, last year it was updated, so this year uh, we will continue the same thing that was in the vaccines last year uh, with um, strain 2, which is a H3N2 like um, strain. Uh, it is not changed from last year. Uh, we have not seen uh, deviation and um, you know, and, and the other thing that I want to mention is that there is a difference between what's in the egg-based vaccines compared to the cell cultured or recombinant vaccine. So there is some minor uh, differences, uh, you know, but uh, for the most part, as far as what's in the vaccine, you know, they're not really considered uh, clinically different. CDC recommends routine annual seasonal influenza immunization for all persons aged six months uh, or, or older who do not have contraindications. Now, there are no pref preferential recommendations uh, for one influenza vaccine product over another, except specifically for adults aged 65 years or older, which we will cover on a later slide. Now, in general, it takes about two weeks on average for the body to fully respond to the vaccines and mount antibodies, so keep that in mind. And vaccination should be offered during September and October and continue through flu season uh, while uh, unexpired vaccine supplies last. And for non-pregnant adults, early vaccination, for example, uh, when the vaccine becomes available in July and August, uh, should be avoided unless there is concern that the later vaccination might not be possible. So. Uh, you know, if somebody's uh, in their uh, third trimester in July, for example, they may go ahead and receive the vaccine. Uh, we'll talk more about vaccination during uh, pregnancy on a later slide. And of course, COVID-19 vaccines can be co-administered with influenza vaccines. It's been shown uh, both safe and effective. Now, here's a summary of the available products for this influenza vaccine season. Uh, we have one that's a live attenuated influenza vaccine, so the flu mist. Historically, uh, the live attenuated uh, vaccine has performed uh, poorly compared to the inactivated vaccine. So for that reason, it is only recommended for uh, persons aged 2 years through 49 because anybody under the age of 2 or age 50 and older is at risk of complications uh, from influenza infection so therefore for those people we want the better vaccine so the better um, 
more effective vaccines that are pretty much everything else in this table. Next, we have inactivated influenza vaccines. Now, uh, uh, traditionally, we have the standard dose. So this is 15 microgram uh, um, shots. And we have several uh, different formulations from different manufacturers uh, available. Uh, now, these are all IM injections, but as the flu mist, the live attenuated, that's actually a nasal, uh, nasal spray. So it's actually helpful for people who are afraid of needles. Uh, for these inactivated um, influenza vaccines, uh, these are essentially all of them are quadrivalent. So when you see a number, uh, the number four means that these are quadrivalent. As I mentioned earlier, we only have quadrivalent available on the market nowadays. Uh, next, we have uh, cell cultured. So uh, the previous vaccine that I mentioned, they are all developed in eggs. So, uh, you know, essentially chicken eggs are uh, what what's uh, used to grow these vaccines. Um, uh, for the non-egg base, we have the cell culture. So cell culture essentially uses mammalian cells to grow as opposed to uh, the egg cells. Uh, and, you know, we have one product, flu cell vac. So it's kind of in the name cell. So it's cell cultures, flu cell vax. And it's also quadrivalent. Uh, pretty much these are for... Uh, age six months and older. Uh, we also have recombinant influenza vaccine. So this actually uh, uses uh, biotech recombinant biotechnology uh, to uh, to make these in a lab. Uh, these are essentially uh, developed in you know uh, some bugs uh, inside the lab. Um, and flu block is the formulation that's available. However, keep in mind that this is only approved for age 18 years and older, so they may not uh, be used in children. And then, uh, you know, spe specifically for elderly who typically respond less to the vaccines, uh, we have a few formulations that boost the response. So one is adjuvanted uh, influenza um, inactivated influenza vaccine. So this uses adjuvants to increase immunogenicity. So flu ad, so ad is in the name adjuvant, and this is uh, for age 65 and older. And we also have the traditional inactivated influenza vaccine in higher dose. So HD is uh, for higher dose. So instead of the 15 uh, microgram, uh, this would be uh, essentially 60 microgram. Uh, so that's a higher dose. Now I will mention that the recombinant Influenza vaccine also has a higher dose compared to the uh, inactivated influenza. So instead of the 15, it uses uh, 45 mi microgram, but it's uh, still less than the high, um, high dose, which is 60 microgram. Now I mentioned this because these will be essentially these three at the bottom uh, will have higher efficacy in elderly. So essentially everything is made uh, through eggs except uh, recombinant and cell culture, which brings us to the question, what if the patient has egg allergy because some of these egg proteins might be uh, in the vaccine? Although not common, you may come across patients who have egg allergy. As I mentioned, majority of the influenza vaccine formulations are grown in eggs. Both cell culture grown and recombinant influenza vaccines are considered egg free. The recombinant vaccine utilizes recombinant DNA technology to manufacture the vaccine and the cell culture grown vaccine utilizes mammalian cells instead of eggs. So should we only give recombinant influenza vaccine to patients with egg allergy? Well first, it's important to know that CDC recommends considering patient observation for 15 minutes after administration of any vaccine, not just the flu shot and regardless of whether they have had allergies or not. Secondly, regardless of reaction to egg exposure, even if anaphylaxis, the recommendation is that all persons aged six months or older with egg allergy who do not have contraindications should receive any licensed and recommended influenza vaccine, including the egg-based vaccine. The bottom line is that egg allergy is not a contraindication to receiving egg-based influenza vaccine. Now, what if the patient had allergy to a previous influenza vaccine ingredients and not just egg allergy? 
we can consider three different groups. So one would be uh, people with an allergy to egg-based vaccine. The second group would be people with allergy to cell-cultured vaccine. And last would be people with a uh, uh, history of reaction to a recombinant vaccine. So in general, uh, when, um, you know, when the CDC says uh, precaution when it comes to allergies, uh, use uh, should occur in an inpatient or outpatient medical setting uh, under supervision of a provider who can recognize and manage a severe allergic reaction. And of course, vaccine components can be found in a package insert. So for the first group, those who have egg, uh, allergy to egg-based um, influenza vaccines, uh, any egg-based vaccine, um, it's contraindicated for these patients. However, they may receive a non-egg-based uh, uh, vaccine, so either a cell-cultured and recombinant. Now, again, this has nothing to do with uh, eggs. This has to do with re uh, you know, uh, allergy to an egg-based vaccine. Now, for the second group, who, uh, you know, if they had an allergy to a cell-cultured inactivated influenza vaccine, uh, any egg base is contraindicated as, as well as the cell culture vaccine. However, they may receive, uh, you know, cautiously a recombinant uh, influenza vaccine. And of course, uh, last group, if they had a history of allergy to recombinant, again, egg base is contraindicated as well as recombinant influenza vaccine, but they may uh, cautiously receive cell cultured influenza vaccine. And of course, it, if it is unknown which influenza vaccine they had um, a reaction to, uh, then an allergist can be consulted to figure out if it's okay for the patient to receive a, vac a vaccine. Now, what are vaccine considerations during pregnancy? So persons who are pregnant or postpartum uh, should receive any inactivated influenza vaccine or recombinant in, uh, influenza vaccine as long as this is before or during the flu season and can be given before pregnancy and during all trimesters of a pregnancy, uh, but in general, limited data during the first trimester. Uh, the live attenuated vaccine should not be used. It's actually contraindicated during uh, pregnancy. And in general, there is less experience with more recently licensed in, uh, inactivated influenza vaccines, such as uh, all the quadrivalents that are available on the market and the cell culture uh, based uh, vaccine. And there is uh, limited data with recombinant influenza vaccine. Now for immunocompromised patients, uh, the same recommendation is made. So either inactivated influenza vaccine or the recombinant, and of course inactivated either egg based or cell culture, uh, you know, similar to uh, uh, pregnancy and live attenuated should not be used you know so so the live attenuated because they replicate in the body they should not be used immunocompromised because it can replicate uh, uh, you know and get out of control due to immunocompromise last uh, what if the patient is taking influenza antiviral medications now, administration of inactivated or recombinant is not affected by antiviral agents. However, if somebody is to take the live attenuated because the, you know, that vaccine needs to replicate in the body, antiviral medications will affect the vaccine efficacy. And when it comes to uh, our antiviral agents used for the flu, uh, the half-life makes a difference. So, you know, some of these, such as Pramivir and Biloxivir, have much longer half-life. Uh, whereas also Tamivir and uh, Zanamivir have shorter half-life. Uh, so in general, uh, you know, uh, the live attenuated influenza vaccine will have reduced effectiveness if Oseltamivir is taken within two days uh, before and, uh, you know, up to 14 days after. So in other words, if somebody is taking Oseltamivir uh, for, uh, for an actual infection or for, for either prophylaxis or whatever reason, um, and they are to receive a live attenuated, uh, you know, they should wait two days after discontinuing oseltamivir to start vaccination. And then once vaccination is given, they should wait at least 14 days uh, before they can receive, uh, you know, for whatever indication, uh, another dose of oseltamivir. And the same concept applies to Primavir and Biloxivir, but the timing is different. So this, for Primavir, five days before and up to 14 days after. Uh, the 14 days is because it takes, uh, you know, an average two weeks for the vaccine to kick in. 
Uh, so, you know, once it's given, regardless of which one it is, you want to wait 14 days for the vaccine to replicate and mount a response. And then uh, the other ones, the two days, five days and 17 days, you essentially waiting for these drugs to be cleared from the body based on the half-life and then give the vaccination. Now, what if the patient is elderly and that's defined as age 65 years or older? So there are three preferential recommendations. So either the high dose inactivated influenza vaccine uh, or uh, the recombinant influenza vaccine, which uh, you know essentially uh, has a higher dose than the standard dose uh, inactivated influenza vaccine uh, or uh, an adjuvanted inactivated influenza vaccine. Uh, and of course, they do say that if none of these are available in the pharmacy, uh, then any other age appropriate influenza vaccine should be used. So any vaccine is better than no vaccine. So you don't want, uh, you know, in other words, if somebody's at the pharmacy and these three are not available, you do not want to, you know, order it and have the patient come back because there is a good chance that they may not come back. So any opportunity to vaccinate uh, individuals. Uh, is very important uh, because any vaccination is better than no vaccination. And the reason these three are perf preferred over others uh, is that, uh, you know, for one, the high dose was studied against the standard dose, and, th and these are specifically in the trivalent vaccines where they did the randomized control trial, and they found that the high dose was superior to the standard dose, specifically it had two, about 24% greater relative efficacy compared to the standard dose. And uh, when it comes to recombinant compared to the standard dose, uh, again, recombinant has a slightly higher dose in it. Uh, so in elderly, they also saw higher uh, efficacy, so about 30% greater relative efficacy compared to the standard dose. And of course, the adjuvanted the flu ad uses MF59 uh, uh, as an adjuvant to increase immunogenicity, which showed about 63% greater relative efficacy. This concludes this presentation.